Yeah, give us a clap, buddy. That was better. Fabulous. That was a better clap. That was a better clap. Mm. More crisp. I've stolen your ball. Talk to me about the ball. You can have that. I'm onto the coin now. I practice pre-game. What are the what are, are you do you, do you like having something on the go? Uh, yeah. Is this an, is it annoying you that I've got your ball? No, it's not annoying <laughs> you. That you've got it. No, not at all. But <laughs> it's just messing with your new. No, I just I wouldn't mind having that. having that as well. <laughs> I don't need that anymore. Thanks, mate. Now that you're out, looking back in, is it what you thought it would be? Um, I'm. St it's it's just adjusting. I'm not I'm not ready to call it yet. Sort of, it's finding a new rhythm of of because football has got such a rhythm to it, like mm. every week. Whereas now it's yeah. But I don't, I don't really miss the game. I was done with the game. It sort of spat me out. Physically, couldn't. I knew I couldn't get through another. I couldn't get through another winter. Mm -hmm. It was to my eternal disappointment that I thought when I was young, starting you know, play ten games, and I would look at the elders at the foot, you know, Scotty West and Rowan Smith and those guys, and think, oh, I, I can't wait to get to that stage where they just seem quite comfortable oh. and they roll out and they just play well. It all seems to work for them, and that must be a nice feeling. And then, of course, you reach that level of experience, maybe not that level of um, player, and very disappointed to realise that's not how it it's, is. It's, if anything, it, it might gets, even be a bit worse. It gets further and further away. Because the stakes, the expectation, just... And all your chips are on the table. I think that's the bit. Every game you play, you put your own reputation and the club's reputation, it's like all the chips on the... You know, no matter what's happened the week before, no matter what you've done, you've won a Brownlow medal and played in a grand final and will go down as one of the greats of the modern era. You, you play on Sunday. <laughs> Is that how it feels? Definitely. Or that am I being overly no, dramatic? No, mate, that's... I had this chat with a bloke during the week who's gone from a fringe player to a regular top ten, almost a star for us. Yeah. And he said, I, I'm not feeling any more safe or comfortable or enjoying my footy anymore <laughs> than when I was fighting for selection every week. And I said, that's, that sums it up. And, yeah. But you talk about that drive and making sense of a pursuit of something, a journal, a journey, a hopeful journey. And all my questions of why have led me to what I consider an understanding at this point in that you gain no fulfilment or motivation out of anything that has come before. No, no level of awards or accolades can give you motivation to start each day, each new day. It's all about what's ahead. Yeah which has led me to this uh, borderline psychotic rhythm of rituals that yep. fill my life around preparing for something and executing. There's preparing comfort for something. in it. I get, I get fulfilment out of that. Yeah. Daniel Janser, he's he talk about the... I think he pinched it from the NFL, someone from the Ravens or something, said enjoy the grind or embrace the grind. Embrace it was. the grind. And the grind is that repetitive, the routine of a footballer's lot. And at the start, that was the thing that would kind of was like, oh, this is, you know, like football factory. And I was like, you know, just like, that would wear me down. But then as it, then you become an, almost an institutionalised man. <laughs> but then by the end, I, I craved it. I loved it. I loved getting to training two hours early to stretch. All the things I, you know, put Vicks in my nose before a game. That was part of the, <laughs> for, for what reason? I don't know. But it was part of the... That was just part of the steps to turn into the super halfback. <laughs> <laughs> Who didn't tackle? <laughs> Maybe when I leave this footy factory institution life, I'm going to have to find the feet again. Yeah. Things are so normalised. It's so normalised for people to recognise me as the footy guy. Yeah. So when I'm not the footy guy anymore, what's what's that going to be like? Is it Am I going to miss recognition, people knowing who I am? Not that I like it or crave it or want but it's it, what, but it's your normal. That's my normal. That's I what think, it is. I think you've crossed the Rubicon on that one, that you'll always, to, to people, you'll always be recognised as... Crazy you know, five, Unless you cut your top knot off, and then it's... <laughs> What's your thoughts maybe, on it? No, nah, I, I, I liked the shorter shag. So yeah. the, I don't think the history books are going to be kind to the top knot. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's always a why. 
So the more people say, cut the hair, go back to the black boots, the more I go, you <laughs> grow the hair. So this is your, this is your punk rock. Wear, wear the fluoro boots. Yeah, wear well, the... I, I said to Pav before I started my career, you know the footy cards that come out? Yeah. I said I want a different look in each card. In each footy card. So when I get to the end, I've got a nice eclectic mix of... And ha how have you stayed true to that? Because oh, you've been rocking the, the locks for a while. It's, yeah, but what happened is they do all the modelling and... Um, like the little models that they make of you and the footy cards yeah. and all that stuff with the top knot. So if you cut that off commercially, oh wow, it's not a not a good move. Right. Well, it started off as uh, apocalyptic weather, but it's it is the sun is coming out. Is that a metaphor for something? Is I have hope we, so. Have we bonded? Is it sunshine now? I hope we've traversed the difficult waters, <laughs> traversed. and now we're heading into clear skies. Word. Traversed is a good word. What about watching footy? Would you would you go and, would you go to the MCG and watch footy? No, I find it quite boring. <laughs> 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 it's too long. Yeah. <laughs> Funny. I'd rather watch on Foxtel, on mute, and pause and rewind stoppages and pause and rewind, just different intricacies and look for, look for stuff, like look for little signs, what players oh, are doing. Stoppages. And... Well, it's where the game's won and lost, okay. mate. No, it's not... It is. Hey. Roll off halfback. Any... Flanks. My brother the flanks. could play a roll off halfback. Can... It's like a... Playing on the flanks like a hill start. You've got you to gotta attack, defend, defend, attack. <laughs> <laughs> Better get the balance right. <laughs> i tell you what I do have issues with. Tackles. You blokes in the midfield in stoppages get a lot of tackles. Mm. I call them fall on top of. Stop. There's a lot of fall on top of. <laughs> Out on the flanks, mate, we might only get one a fortnight, but it's like, it's like a cheater catching an antelope. <laughs> <laughs> that's open, that's like the grass plains tackles, and then there's the fall on top of. Yeah. It's neither here nor there. I just wanted to get that. Well, we had a guy, Matty DeBoer, who is deeply analytical. Yeah. And he went to the degree of figuring out what counted as a tackle. And he worked that out, that if you joined in a game yeah. tackle, one tackle registered. Mm. So he would come home with double digits regularly. It seems. And he's just hugging everyone, basically. Well, that's, I, want to, I want to put it out there to the, the statistical community. Mm. I want some more fine-tuning on, on that. Only laid about 10. I'm kind of fascinated by veteran footballers. Mm. But I used to observe them to when they were coming to the end. And, and a lot of them talked about, at the Bulldogs anyway, of when they finished, the war's over. I played a game against Chris Judd when I was probably my second year. He was at Carlton in the last couple of years of his career. And we were tagging him and going after him. And I was just so thrilled to be on the field with Juddy. But I looked at him and he looked so bitter at everyone else. And, and I thought, I wonder what, like, you're a, you're a champion, two-time Brownlee medalist, like, what? But I, the older I get, the more I understand that every week uh, there's more people coming to get you. And yeah. you have to fight that urge to be, not be bitter at other players and bitter at the game. And I'm not saying Juddy was was bitter or no, didn't but... like it, but it's just, and it's an endurance. You yeah. just endure through a war like of people just constantly coming to rip you down. I think people don't quite appreciate that Nat Fife goes out and, you know, is in the top, top three players on the ground that week, but they, I think they fail to realise that the meetings of the opposition club all week, are, <laughs> a lot of it is surrounded by how do we stop Nat Fife? That's what you're talking about with Juddy, that the, the back half of his career, he was just had people hanging off him the whole time. And I suppose that, that must have... I'm sure some days he was like, just let me run. Look, I've got these jets. I can just... If you give me a bit of space, I can just go... Pew! That's, that's what it is. And, and probably Gary Ablett's the other one that I watched in that space. Of We're watching the prime years of these guys' careers go by where only rarely do we get to see them unbridled. The mm. collar comes off and they can just do whatever they want. Yeah. And I'm in that space now. And you put the cape on and try and wear that as a compliment and enjoy that and take motivation that you're providing a real challenge for them. But yeah. you do in the weaker moments go, just 
Just let me entertain people. <laughs> let me have a free run out of cricket. Let me just do what I used to do at Lake Grace. Yeah. But then when you watch the opposition superstars and you're playing against them, you're going, we've got to be all over him yeah. because he's going to tear us apart. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the hypocrisy of footy in a nutshell, the, the tagger. Mm. We despise wow. the opposition tagger. <laughs> like, they're the devil. They've got horns. Like, if he comes to one of our players, we must bury him. <laughs> we must. And straight after that meeting, so our players' player of the week is... Ryan Crowley. Ryan Crowley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's the, put the halo on him. So when you used to do the huddle and the, the speech, yep. did you ever I research that. gems of... Uh... Because you look around at the eyeballs and you get mixed responses. You get some guys who are just lasered in on you and every word is counting, and some guys who are just off with the fairies. Some guys are listening to the music from the stadium. I love That's my favourite. That was my favourite yeah. part of the job. Yeah, OK. I loved it. One time I did have this sort of perverse thought of, because there's a very famous EJ Witten speech that is captured on video, you know, you've got to show me all the guts and determination you've got in your body, you've got to inspire me. And I thought, I wonder if I could just... Because I know it back the front. I've, I've seen that, I've absorbed that speech. I can sort of imitate EJ's voice and inflection on it. I thought, if I just do that, if I steal that script, how many will know? <laughs> could I do it? And, and, and like, Lockie Hunter would be like, so he's pinched that. Like he, would, he would have been straight up. I, I, a lot of the guys would have been, that's no, good, you know, it's good. Well, I mean, I'm cautious of it because if you do give a big heartfelt one and they kick five in the first quarter, <laughs> you go, I don't know if there's any transference there. I mean, we've used the ones before, if you don't give 100% effort, your family's dead. <laughs> and then we come in at quarter time and there's just been a mass homicide. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, yeah, that's... So you have to use it sparingly, otherwise you run out of brothers and sisters. Yeah. But it is about that last little bit, it is putting on that cape, isn't it? Yeah. You go from just being a regular 195 centimetre bloke yep. to uh, having an invincibility cloak wrapped yep. around you. Well, you wear the cloak or the cape better than just about anyone in the league and thanks for having me for breakfast. It was a beautiful bit of toast. Tea and sympathy it was, the old tradition. Um, thanks so much for having me in your home. It's great to chat. Thanks, Bob.